Very good morning. Glad to be here. Uh, this is my first work camp. Uh, I've seen some of you guys on at work. Is that WordPress TV or something like that? Yeah, so um, I really enjoy being part of this community. And uh, I've been using WordPress since about 2005. Uh, started off as a designer and then uh, moved into a web development um, job position. Did some freelance work and uh, based on my background in HTML, CSS, and web design, started learning jQuery. And uh, it seemed easy to get to know because of the similarities with um, CSS. So being the development track, I just like to show a hands up. How many of you already use jQuery? Um, okay, for more than a couple years? Okay, great. Uh, do any of you write your own custom jQuery plugins? Okay, good. So what I want to talk about today is on two levels. Basically, utilizing WordPress with plugins that already have jQuery and doing something a little bit extra, which will be more introductory use of jQuery, and then also writing your own custom plugin in jQuery to do something on the WordPress theme. Um, so, uh, you guys use Pretty Photo, anybody familiar with Lightbox? Okay, so yeah, Pretty Photo is the port of the prototype Lightbox for using a modal overlay and including photos and other web pages with Ajax and so forth. And um, typically, it, the nice use of it is to display photos. And I want to use it this time to import a form so that someone could refer a friend. And so we're going to be looking at a project that I've been working on. Um, it's all dumbed down, and I removed the graphics because the client hasn't seen it. And my client who hired me is okay with me showing it off and looking at the jQuery use. Um, so, yeah, let's just go look at code. Text me users anywhere? <laughs> All right, so here, getting used to this monitor resolution. Okay. Okay. Can we see here? Okay, yeah, so like I said, I stripped out the, um, all the graphics, and what we're looking at here is a little share. Um, Dealing on the right here. This is just CSS, but this client likes to have, instead of all the uh, very popular uh, networks, oh, I'm not plugged into the internet. So I got my Facebook Live and tweet buttons and so forth, but they like to use their own as well. Um, so, uh, do I have JavaScript turned off? I think I do. So, what we want to bring into the um, overlay is this form. Yep, look at that. So we know what we want to put in there. Okay, there's a pretty photo in action. Um, so when I started off using pretty photo mainly for their photos. And uh, so the use of it was just to show off some little smile pictures. And uh, is this loading? There we go. And it's having a little trouble here, isn't it? Okay, here we go. Yeah, so it's a simple light box, right? And I'm like, well, I want to put um, a form in there with Ajax. So what, what does the plugin give me? Um, it gives me jQuery already loaded. Uh, it gives me the ability to use the modal overlay to use a class to set on um, you know, an element that will trigger that behavior. That's just the source. So this little share piece of code um, in my theme is just an include that I've written um, to include in all the pages, not necessarily all the blog pages. And you see, yeah, let's see it. Okay, so here this class to friend is the HTML for um, that go to a friend. So we're going to share to a friend via email. And uh, this attribute REL WP pretty photo is what triggers the overlay. And let's look at the plugin real quick and the settings on the plugin. Um, there it is. Okay, 
okay, so in the automation, I'm automatically replacing the image links, uh, which is the only thing I want to do with this behavior right now. And um, also, on the technical section here, you can type in your own class is what you want to use to trigger that behavior. And this is the default class, WP Pretty Photo. When I started this project, I found Pretty Photo. I was like, oh, this is great. I'm going to use this for all the photos. So I included that and uh, started working on the project and then got to the photos and found that I should use the plugin from the start. Um, so let's just go back and, and look at um, the use of jQuery. Um, I'm loading it in the footer instead of the header. And uh, one of the advantages of that is um, it doesn't execute till DOM's ready, or you can execute right after all the HTML is already loaded in the browser. I'm also not choosing to use the jQuery that comes from WordPress, because you can load jQuery through your functions, and it'll automatically include it, because it's included in your admin area. And um, so instead, I want to use the Google um, Ajax API to load jQuery. So it's just, that's more flutter. Give me a second. So how many of you guys use the uh, Google Ajax API to load jQuery? Is that common practice for you guys? Um, if you're not, what I like to do is um, use some JavaScript to check if jQuery is already defined. Uh, because if it is, we don't need to load it. Um, some of your plugins may have already included jQuery. Um, so in this case, we're just checking if not window.jQuery, if that object isn't defined, then let's go ahead and load uh, from the Google Ajax library jQuery version 1.4.2. And um, that's compatible with our pretty photo button. Yes? You can also do a script. Do you know that before? No. Uh, a script is a WordPress way of saying, is this already loaded? Yeah. If not, then... Oh, that's what I'm talking about. Use that in your functions? Or... Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I saw that. And then it, it, it includes the one that's already in WordPress. Right, it does it with PHP as opposed to this client-side solution, yeah. Yeah, that's a good way to do it too. Um, one thing, the advantage we have with using the Google or Microsoft or whoever's Ajax API is that they probably already visited that file and it's already cached in their browser. So there's a little bit less of a load. And jQuery is pretty lightweight, but still, it's a little bit of a performance gain, it, performance gain if it's already cached. Either way, it's a great way to do it. Um, so that's where I'm loading jQuery. Um, and then in my JavaScript, now I'm interacting with this custom little share HTML. Um, I created a, a mini plugin just to check if that is present first. You know, is that link on my screen? If it's there, let's add some extra information to help a uh, pretty photo, like a width and a height. We're going to give it the href of the actual form file that's in WordPress. And then um, if it's not there, we're just going to remove whatever was there. Um, being that if they loaded directly the send to a friend form, there'd be no reason to load that with Ajax in an overlay because they're already there. Um, and so where we instantiate that plugin or, or call it um, is right here. You know, if the share ID to friend class, then we just say share to a friend. And then that sets up the um, HTML in that ref attribute and then um, we get that behavior. So basically, we already have the pretty photo plugin in action automatically, and if I want to do something a little bit extra with it, all I really had to do, I didn't have to do this extra plugin, but I just needed to use that class or that attribute in the REL attribute, WP pretty photo, and it does it for me. Um, where this is useful to a client and the user experience, um, I think it's a great way um, to send someone an email, send a friend an email, or use a contact form. Uh, typically, you don't want to interrupt people too much. Um, so if they can stay where they're at and just interact with that page and maybe send it to their own email box to come back to it later or bookmark it, whatever they like, it's just another tool um, not to be too, not to get them away from what they like doing and looking at your content. Um, so anyways, uh, on any page, that should work. So that's the, the pretty photo. Ew, it doesn't work there, does it? Like I said, I, I totally broke this theme so that I can show it off. So any questions on pretty photo? Um, where to find it, anything like that? Yeah. I just found that little circuit. I probably, I think pretty photo is one word. Pretty photo, if not one of our 
<laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Not corn, but still. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. I, I should have clarified that. Yeah, yeah I'm yeah. glad you did that. I hope that the answer is the coffee thing. Um, yeah. But I did have a question that's actually about a light box. I don't know if anybody else has heard the same thing, but I've moved a bunch of the light box like plugins uh, and the vapor thing. The one I wanted to use, I couldn't use because what happened was I, was, I had a photo gallery, so you put in the photo works, everything's supposed to dim, and then the little light box would show up. What happened was, that um, we had a jQuery uh, slider on uh, the money shot area, the web page, as well as the navigation area. Some of that, the, the white areas and the gray areas of the money, we spoke the slider and the navigation area still showed up 100%, not in the individual. Yeah. Yes. We tried, yeah, I tried that. Yeah, and that's a good reason that we're all here, because right? so we don't follow each other on Twitter and send each other questions and stuff like that. Um, I was going to ask, uh, my Twitter handle is Pixel Handler, and um, I'd like to include you guys all on my WordPress list. At the end of this, I'll put that information up there, and let's connect more and share what we know, and that's the point of the WordCamp. Uh, one of the things that I did mention with Pretty Photo, it has those controls to control the gray areas if you want them 100% black, 50%, depending on the browser capabilities that's supported with the opacity in CSS. And um, so anyways, uh, it was a great find. I like Pretty Photo. A lot of people are using it already. It seems very stable. Um, you know, it's, it's a true and, and fun way to interact with photos and do something a little bit extra with, uh, with regard to loading in your forms with Ajax. Yes. What was that brand? Uh, what was the link that had brand on CC? What was that too? Oh, um, those are my short links. Uh, and this this oh, goes okay. into our, our next step. Um, so the second half of this talk, I'd like to talk about writing your own custom plugins. Um, and I showed that a little bit with adding the extra information on that share link with writing a mini jQuery plugin. One of the reasons I like to write jQuery plugins for almost everything is I can reuse it later. Um, comment jQuery.no conflict and then it'll they'll play nice. And so a couple parts to this miniature function here is that it is using jQuery and it's extending jQuery um, right here where it's adding to the jQuery function method, yada yada. I mean that's gonna be whatever you decide to name your plugin. Uh, you can pass options and an argument to the function. And so whatever your default defaults are, they're just gonna be a JavaScript object. And then you can extend those or overwrite what's predefined um, by calling it, and then it'll overwrite it here. So um, this variable ops or options is going to use the jQuery method to extend our defaults, which is this um, variable here, with the options that's passed to the function. Um, and then the next part of the function is to return the wrap set. The nice thing about jQuery is you can chain things and do more after you've already done something. And so typical jQuery plugin will always return this, which is the context of what was used to, to call this plugin, and uh, whether whatever it is on your page. And so it's going to go through each one of them in case there's more than one that this is being applied to. In this instance, I'm only going to use it on one object. But either way, it's going to return itself, and then it's going to do some stuff with that object. I'm creating a local variable here with underscore, and I'm saying um, the naming it object is this. So I'm using jQuery again to query what's inside this variable, what's inside this function, and make it a jQuery object that I could then interact with. Instead of calling it again and again, it's just cached in a variable. It's inside the scope of this function um, and won't conflict with underscore used somewhere else. So I'm just saying here, um, I'm adding another um, variable under the local variable, foo equals object find ops foo. So this is just generic, and then your code to return chain. A couple things that when you're doing you know, development, you're gonna want to debug, so if you're using Firebug, or um, just alerts, or however you like to debug. Um, these are a couple methods I found, I'm not sure where I found them, it might have been Paul Irish or somebody like that, but, um, Whatever browser you're like you're working in, it'll give you an alert, or it'll use the console to give you your errors, um, and or to log things. And then um, I also like when I'm developing to use the try and the catch, because um, then it's going to use those debug methods to to log it and tell me what I did wrong. Um, so this is just a boilerplate 
example of a plugin. Like I said, that's up on the web. You can use it, do whatever you want with it. Um, but let's look at the code that we're actually going to interact with. So, I mean, this is a simple thing, and it's kind of expected behavior, right? You have this little helper text that says search. Of course, I want to search something. Um, the go button says go. I don't know where I want to go. I don't know where Starbucks. Okay, well, let's search and then go do that. Um, and we see this all the time. So you click on it, it goes away. You click away, it comes back. Um, maybe you need to copy and paste something. So you go away and copy something. Oh, it kept what I typed. Good, I needed that. So I'm trying to make something that's useful for the user, but they don't even know it's there. It's just It just works and it's helpful. Now, again, this is a simple demonstration, but we want to look at the events that are being used. There's the focus and the blur. And I know a lot of you are JavaScript users. Um, you're probably already using these things. Um, so let's just get right into the code. So here's the function that I wrote. Um, the ID on that search input, straight out of WordPress, you just pound S, right? Or hash S. Um, so that's going to be the input ID that I want to interact with on those events, the focus and the blur. Um, so focus means you put your mouse in there and you click and you're going to start typing. and blur means you, you left the form and you're going to do something else. Um, you can force reset it or not force reset it. In the example that I showed, if I started typing something, I wanted to keep it in case I had to copy something back into there. But if I don't want to do that, every time they leave, I just want it to go back to search, then I could force it to reset. Um, the default helper text for this plugin is just going to be search. But depending on how you call the plugin, you could change that. And maybe it's search my blog, you know, whatever you choose. Um, so that's, that's my default object um, to interact with that form input. And so to write that helper text inside the input field, um, I want to bind an event. Um, so the blur is the event. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. OK, so I'm working backwards here. Assuming that when you first load the window, you haven't already entered the form, right? Well, I don't know, it's a lot of work to get them inside the form and then leave the form. So you put some helper text in there. And I'm already doing other things with the load event. So I'm just going to define what happens when you leave the form. And it puts helper text in there. And then when I'm done defining what's going to happen with the behavior, I'm just going to trigger that blur event right away. So on load, it's going to say, oh, you just left the text input. You blurred. And then it's going to give you um, the helper text that you defined. Um, so the first chain um, is on binding blur. This little piece here is a little bit unnecessary, but I thought I'd use it to demonstrate it. So I have some helper text here as an option. So my options variable and my helper text um, variable chain together here. Um, in this field, jQuery will use the data method to store that data with that object. Um, so in this case, the data that we're storing with this event and an object is just going to be the text search. I could have just as easily put search there, or I could have. Anyways, jQuery does use data with your events to store data if you choose to use it. Um, so it's an anonymous function. It's passing the, the event that happened um, you know, to the internal part of the function. And again, I'm creating a local variable self. Sometimes this confuses me. You know, where am I at when I say this? So I like to use self. Um, and again, I'm, I'm getting that piece, or that form, actually. That form element would be this, the pound s id. And then, um, so if the value of it, or what's inside the form, is null or nothing, um, then I'm just going to change that value to the event data message. So these two things are different here in their context, but are the same thing, right? So this is the terminology used to pass data to this event. And then this is used to reference that data. So the event.data.message. You see here that it's named message. And then in your chaining, it's named message here. And then I'm returning false, because there's a lot more that can happen on a form. Uh, with event propagation, 
um, and bubbling, there may be other things listening for activity on this form, like validation. Um, so in this case, I want to return false because I'm done with this behavior. And so returning false is going to stop event propagation. I, I said delegation, I mean that. Event propagation and bubbling. Um, so that's the blur event, or when you leave uh, the text input field. The, the second in the chain here, you, you see that it's not really closed out. I didn't use the semicolon. It's just another dot bind and binding one more thing uh, is the focus event. So when you enter the text input, uh, again, we're going to do something. Um, we're going to use that search text again as our data. And uh, again, I'm making another local variable. These two have nothing to do with each other because they're contained inside this function. Um, so this self is, I mean, technically they're the same thing, but I wanted to demonstrate that you could use the same name and it's a local variable. And uh, anyway, I'll leave that. It's a practice. So now I want to check if my options are to force reset the form or to keep what's already in there if the user decided to type. Um, so if that option is true, um, or what's inside that text input already equals what I'm trying to do, I don't have to do nothing, right? Um, so then, if options, I'm reading that backwards. Okay. So basically, when you enter it, you want to clear it. So I'm setting the value to nothing. So as soon as I enter that text input, I'm ready to type, I'm ready to start searching. Um, again, I'm returning false, because if there's other things happening on that form, we don't want to trigger any other listeners to what we're doing. Um, and then the last of three um, methods in jQuery that we're using to chain on, on this form object is the blur. And I said that at the start, that all we're doing is saying, let's just assume that they entered the text field and they left it, so we need to show our default helper text. So that's the behavior of this plugin. Um, and then how do we use it? Um, down here in our try and catch, um, we're just going to say search form, search text. So search form is probably the div that wraps that form. And um, the default. Um, object uses pound s, which I know is the text input for that form. So it doesn't really matter where I call it, it's still going to look for that unique object. But I, I, you know, I might as well use the form to trigger this plugin behavior. Um, there's other ways you can do this, use this plugin that I was talking about, and that's, let me just change over to some notes I have. Is this accessible online also? So we could revisit it when... Yeah, these two, um, the boilerplate plugin and this share plugin is online on that html.src.com site. And I have the links in this presentation and I, I can share them, post them on Twitter or something. Um, so yeah, so what I just described here was you're using the search text plugin on the search form ID or you could, you know, use your options to declare, you know, search my blog. Um, and maybe you're not using WordPress, maybe you want to use this on a, a different CMS, and maybe there is, is search. So that's where jQuery plugins come in real handy. If you start writing your own library of plugins, you know, you can use your own code base, and the jQuery, jQuery plugin is not tied to your markup. So it, it's um, loosely coupled in a lot of ways. So in my plugin definition, I have some defaults, but if I want to use this plugin in another system, all they have to do is call the plugin with my new information. I don't have to rewrite the plugin based on that markup. It's a loosely typed language. So uh, the two equal signs say, yes, it equals that. And when you're comparing two things, three equal signs, it says it equals that, and it's the same type. So if it's Boolean, true or false, I'm saying that it's also Boolean, true or false, rather than um, no or zero also triggering false. Um, I forget where I did that. Um, are you guys using the try and catch a lot when you're developing already? Is that helpful? Um, it'll tell you when you break something. Um, I don't know, maybe we should go break something. Let's see what it does. Okay. Okay, so that variable is not going to be defined. Okay, 
there it is. So my try and catch is, hey, you got an error, underscore self is not defined. Um, I didn't have to go write some custom alerts and say, this is not defined, and show me what it should be. Um, so it's just a quick way to find out what you're doing wrong or not so wrong. Um, so on other notes, is anyone using uh, Facebook instead of your commenting tools to write comments? Is that kind of handy? It's like one line of code and all of a sudden you've got interaction with Facebook API? Uh, also more secure, yeah. Yeah, so you're a kismet and checking to see if you got junk, it's all on Facebook, you don't have to worry too much about it. Um, what about the uh, custom uh, post types in WordPress? Anybody using that stuff yet? Yeah? Great, pretty cool stuff. So yeah, this site is using a custom post type for its testimonial videos, and I found a lot of examples on them. Um, yeah, it's a lot of errors. Um, so anyway, that about wraps up what I had to share um, on using jQuery and extending it. Um, I could show you a couple of other quick examples and, and we'll be done here in just a couple minutes. So this is my theme.js file. One thing that I am doing and recently I've adopted this practice is stuff that doesn't need to wait for document ready. Since I'm loading this theme.js in my footer, I can just act on it right away. So on HTML, I'm removing a class, no JavaScript. You know, I put in my markup Node.js in case there's no JavaScript, I can do something with CSS to show things that would have been hidden otherwise. Um, on my list, on my last child, I want to add a class, last item. So on my menus, um, depending on the look and feel, you know, we have these background bars on the last one. I don't want a background bar at the bottom. So I'm using jQuery to add some additional classes to that um, because it's dynamic. I don't know how many links are going to be in that list. Um, I'm also using Kufon for some image replacement. Um, so you see, these are a little blurry here, but um, you know that's just text, but it's using Kufon to replace it with an image. In some areas, I have buttons that are also using that. Um, a text input button isn't text. Um, it's value of that input button is text, so you can't necessarily replace the text in that button. So with jQuery, with the text in that, and then uh, following that, uh, let's take the text that we originally had and, and put that into the span. And um, we also had some click behavior on that button already. So let's just, uh, you know, trigger that click. Um, so that's, you know, again, you can find this stuff on Google just by searching. So then on my coupon replace, I can say replace the button text or this span.input that I just wrote up here. So now I can use the fancy type that the customer wants to use in my input button without having to change the markup of the contact form 7. You guys use contact form 7? Yes, that's what I'm using here. Yeah, but okay. I had a question. It was my understanding that coupon uh, just, you, you said that it uh, converts the web text into an image? Or, yeah. Or is it actually still web text using a different font? Because would oh, that no, yeah. SEO value? If it was just an image? Yeah, so the, you know, until Google is searching through your JavaScript behaviors, which I don't imagine they're probably doing now or doing soon, um, they'll just take the text that's in your markup. So in my markup, this is just a button that says submit. Um, and what's happening to it is um, it's creating an image here. Uh, Oh wait, that's not it, yeah. Hold on. Is, that, is it down there? Ah, I'm getting lost here on my screen. Uh, I missed the button. Yeah, so the value is submit. Um, are you trying to, trying to show blue font, right? Oh, it's not executed in here. Oh, I have that JavaScript. Remember, I broke it. <laughs> Let's go unbreak it. Uh, fix it. Okay. I have an error that I broke on that contact form page that's using that input button, so I can't show what's happening in terms of the extra span that it's creating. Um, so I'll just move on. Uh, it's not a button. It's already just text. It's just anchor text. It is using Kufon, yeah. So yeah, up in here, um, 
Yeah, we can look at it and mock up the fine. Yeah. So yeah, canvas with um, it gives you some style and line. And it's still text, you're right. Um, so it's using canvas to create a drawing of that text. No. Yeah. It, it does that for, uh, for Firefox and those, uh, okay, doesn't coupon create flash spacing for IDs? It does, yeah, yeah. Another thing I'm using besides coupon is they have font face, which is pretty fun. Um, and then you don't need to do replacement, you, you just load it. Yeah, you can like type kit it. Or, or you can convert your own library, and as long as it's licensed for embedding, you can use that. Um, what the question was, does IE create flash? I don't know if IE creates flash. So, so yeah. Flash. So in IE, I believe coupon renders the content in flash. I'm pretty sure it has a Swift that it can use as an asset if it needs it. Yeah. Oh, you might be thinking of Zipper. Maybe we're mixing up Zipper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, we're mix, mixing up Zipper with coupon. That's one of the things that I use coupon instead of Zipper. Yeah. Because you can interact with jQuery with Zipper. Cool. Because it's not a flash element, but you need to be able to capture any events that are clicked on it. Exactly. Other elements and those things. Yeah. So coupon's better with JQuery. Yeah, definitely. So a couple little things. These are executed right in line at the end of the HTML. The things that I'm doing after that is just declaring some plugins. So as a practice, all my JavaScript that I need to interact with after ready, I'm just writing miniature plugins that I can reuse for something later. I have a little plug in here, plug in here that looks for an anchor that has a PDF or a doc, and then it's going to, um, you know, add a class to it to do something extra with the CSS. Um, so here, this little link says about stacks. It's a PDF. Well, since it's a PDF and jQuery recognized that, I want to add this little doc icon next to it as a little helper information um, for the users. And so there's the search text again, uh, the shared our friend, and then the debugging methods. And then so after, you know, this is a shortcut for your document ready. Um, so when it's ready, we're just going to call all these plugins and execute them and let the users have fun with your website. So thanks for your time. Uh, so good. I, uh, I want to share my information with you here. Um, my Twitter handle is Pixel Handler, so you can connect with me there. I like to connect with you guys. I keep a, a list on there for WordPress users. Um, do a little app reply or something, I'll add you to my list. My websites are here. Um, this project, uh, the code is courtesy of morecabbage.com. They're one of my clients that likes to use WordPress for some of their CMS solutions. And so they were kind enough to let me show off the code that I've been using for them. So I want to put in a plug for them. They're a great group of guys out of Dallas. Thanks.